On today's program, I interview Peter Kling. Peter Kling is considered to be the Einstein of biblical prophecy. He's been on this show many times, and we continue our discussion of the Donald Trump prophecy of 2017. To learn more about Peter Kling, visit his website, peterkling.com. Peter Kling, welcome back to the program. Well, thank you very much, Russell. It's a pleasure being here and, and a pleasure chatting with you and your uh, listeners and helping bring some enlightenment to them. What do you make of Donald Trump's first week as president? Well, you have to admit that whether you like Trump or not, he's probably the first president to really hit the ground running, and he's he's doing everything that he said he was going to do in his campaign. Well, so far, you know, he's only been in office not even a week yet, and he's un- undone a lot of things that Obama did, and uh, he's getting ready to go forward with this uh, wall b- between the United States and Mexico. What I thought was most interesting, though, and this is something that's going to be indicative of uh, his administration. Two things, actually. Uh, I understand that if I got the news correctly, he's ordered. Uh, first, he, he's frozen all government hiring. So all federal hiring is, is put on a freeze. But at the same time, today, he ordered uh, the Border Patrol to hire 10,000 more Border Patrol guards. And I believe there's also a, uh, a hiring uh, order for Homeland Security as well. Uh, I didn't get the, the full story. I kind of got it in passing. But the 10,000 border 10,000 more Border Patrol guards are uh, scheduled to be hired. So he's serious about this wall. And then he's come out today and again say, well, Mexico is going to pay for it. He's talking about putting a, a 20% tax on anything. That's um, just to Mexico. just interject here, uh, 5,000 additional border protection officers. Is it 5,000? 5,000, yeah. Okay. It commenced the immediate construction of a 1,900-mile-long wall and an additional 5,000 border protection officers. Yeah, maybe it was an addition. There was additional number of people that he had hired for something that I believe is is falling under Homeland Security. But the number that I had gotten initially was ten thousand. So I thought, well, he's serious. Okay, so it's five thousand at least for Border Patrol, and that is uh, the executive order to tackle the issue of undocumented immigrants, tripling resources for enforcement with ten thousand additional immigration officers. Uh, 10,000 additional immigration officers. So there, there we go. Targeting sanctuary cities. Yeah. I know I had heard that 10,000 somewhere. So he's done that. He, he's actually now, from what I understand, I guess that they're going to be putting this, calculating the cost of building the wall and putting it out to bid here. This is something that's going to happen. The other thing that he did, which I thought was quite interesting, already uh, the, the shootings and murders in Chicago of it's 40 percent more than 40 percent more than what it was last year at this time so chicago's setting a, another new record for uh shootings and homicides and trump turned around and basically told them to get to deal with it or he's going to send the feds in and a lot of people were like all upset because now trump is threatening chicago and trump when you listen you know when you listen to what he said or in in his command here he said that he that they're willing to give chicago all the help they need whatever they need to do but they got to fix this homicide problem that they've got going on there and but rahm emanuel's so arrogant he's obstinate he wouldn't agree with trump on anything he but he doesn't have to because if trump says do it guess what's going to happen it's going to get done he will send in the, the the feds he'll send in the fbi or he'll go beyond that to, to go deal with this situation and put an end to the murders he's not I think it's pretty safe to say that uh, there's a new sheriff in town and he's brought a lot of deputies with him. <laughs> you know, it's a complete change from what we've seen. It's, you might say it's complete American protectionism. And he's running this country not like a politician. He's running it like a businessman and he intends the United States to make money. Politicians know how to spend money. Businessmen don't spend money unless they they spend money to make money. And so that is the way that he's running this country is 
giving out an executive order. Well, he's been the chief executive officer of his corporation for how many years? He's just moved into a different office, that's all. So we're going to see more come. We'll probably see more executive orders out of Trump than we did out of Obama or anybody else. Obama does not hold the record for executive orders. I forgot which president does, but it's not Obama. But Obama... I think it's Roosevelt or something like that, or Eisenhower. I believe, believe it was Roosevelt, now that you mention it. Um, but what Obama did was sell out the country. He has done absolutely, he did absolutely nothing to secure the borders or to secure who comes into this country. He, he's, uh, the, the, he's managed the EPA, so the EPA basically puts a stranglehold on industry that they can't produce anything because they can't meet the requirements that they have to meet. And uh, he's gone directly after the coal industry. And coal is one of our exports. We export a significant amount of coal. And why? So why is he going after the coal industry? And, and so you've got all these different things which were obviously meant to take America apart and turn us into a third world country. So now all of a sudden stops. Uh, we have Trump that's come in and he stopped the bleeding. The really sad part of all this is the division that we see within the United States now. So all these leftists or globalists, whatever you want to call them, all up in arms over Trump, and most of them don't even have a clue as to why. Oh, well, it, because everything that he's accused of is all made up. I, I, I've lived in the New York metropolitan area most of my 60 years, and uh, Trump came on the scene mid-70s. And he, there's been newspaper article after newspaper article after newspaper article about Donald Trump and his business dealings and so forth and so on. I never recall seeing any anything about him being a misogynist, by, about him looking down, you know, viewing women as a different or separate class, or him being a bigot or a racist. I've never seen any of him accused of any of that. And yet throughout this campaign, he was accused of all of it and is still accused of it. Why? Because he wants to send illegal aliens out of the country? You know, it, it absolutely makes no sense. So there's a there's this... Now, politics aside, what we see is this huge division within the country itself. And most of those who are causing the division seem to be pretty clueless. Because they're coming up with illegitimate reasons. And when we look, you know, for, for their for what they're saying... And when we look at who is behind this, we find that da, 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 it goes right back to George Soros, at least the majority of it. And Soros has done more to, uh, to you know, Obama's been his puppet, Obama and Hillary both. And he's done his best to destroy the economy of this country. And he ha he's not alone, but he's just the main figure that stands out because of his involvement. He's funding all these protests. Yes, he, uh, well, uh, uh, he funded 50 different women's groups who marched in this million woman march on Washington where, and the costumes that they were dressed in. Oh my God. What the heck was that supposed to be? Vagina costumes. Is, is this what we've sunk into? So you got all these women who are out, and what are they protesting for? Well, the main thing is it's a feminist march, and again, it's equal choice, the right to choose. It gives women that their their say in society. So now they can that they're reaffirming their right to murder their unborn children is what it all boils down to. So seriously, now interestingly enough. Trump wants to cut all funding to Planned Parenthood. As a matter of fact, he wants to cut out abortions, all t funding for abortions altogether, which is just fine by me because it's bothered me for years that my tax dollars go pay for somebody's mistake and then make a bigger mistake by aborting the child. So, you know, I can, uh, that's something that I've agreed with for a long time. Why should I f finance something that I disagree with? Now, I don't disagree. If a woman wants to go murder her unborn child, that's up to her. I'm not playing the judge. I just ain't going to finance it. So, you know, we've got 
we hear again more division within the country for, for ridiculous reasons. We already know uh, about Pizzagate and, and the child trafficking issue and where, where that leads up right up to the highest levels. And the, these where it is are the same people who Soros is, is financing. Soros gave uh, Hillary's run for the presidency $100 million. She should have never run for president. She should have never been put out there with her ba baggage and background. There's a trail of dead bodies there that go all the way back to Whitewater, and I'm not and I'm not just talking about the obvious ones of, of Ambassador Stevens. So we've got now a president who's trying to undo the last eight years. He's got three military generals on his staff, retired, but yet. Three generals. I don't know of any president that had three generals on their staff. Alexander Haig, I guess, was a general, and he was Secretary of State under uh, Reagan, as I recall. And then you had was Rumsfeld? No, Rumsfeld wasn't a general. Um, but now he, he so he's got a significant military backing, and he's doing things to get the military and the law behind him to go do the job that he needs to go do. Uh, let's see, already Mad Dog Mattis here turned around what, that they carried out a bombing raid on ISIS and took out one of their, one of the people that Obama couldn't, couldn't shake out for years. They got him on the first time out in this bombing raid, one of the head, head uh, honchos of ISIS. These, these people aren't going to play around. And sooner or later, those who are protesting, I think it's interesting, but the, the protests, uh, 200 people were arrested uh, in the inauguration protest, and then they find, find that they're being, that they're facing 10 years in prison and $25,000 in fines. Oh, we didn't know that was going to happen. Well, you shouldn't have been protesting, even if you were paid by George Soros, because he ain't going to pay to get your butt out of jail. You just became a, Storo, a Soros stooge. So, you know, that's where the whole world is headed in this whole situation. And Trump is a major stick in their bicycle spokes. But the general population isn't even aware of what, the, of what is going on and how they're being controlled. And it's all being controlled by artificial intelligence. People are no, they have no, virtually no reason for believing what they believe. They believe the lie. And it's interesting, it's also foretold that they would believe the lie sooner than the truth. But what's the lie? Well, the, the lie of everything that, that's going on in this country as far as, uh, let's see, Hillary was, uh, clean and, and, and uh, you know, right for the country, and she wasn't a criminal, and, and she didn't have all this baggage. Uh, the, the lie about all these negative things that have come out with Donald Trump. The fake news that has finally been exposed for what it is. You know, he, and then we can all blame it on the Russians because the fake news picked that story up, too. And while everybody was saying, no, the, the Russians didn't hack in the DNC, there was one report, and it wasn't even a true report. It was a made-up report, and the news ran with it, even though they knew it wasn't real. It's like, and we're supposed to believe all this and just go along with it? So when you've got Hollywood actors who, you know, I could care less what an actor says. Say your line, let me, and deliver it well, because I paid to see this movie. I don't care for your political opinion one way or the other. Keep that to yourself. I'm not paying paying you for that. But I I care about what they say. A lot of these guys like Shia LaBeouf and some of these other people. I don't want to watch their movies anymore. No, because you know, well, first of all, when's the last time you've seen a really good actor? I mean, a class actor. Daniel Day Lewis. Good actor. Yes, good actor. I liked him in uh, was it Last of the Mohegans? Yeah, that's a long time ago. Very. I believe, believe that's what he one of the movies that he was in. I I, I love. Yep, I, I like that movie. There are good actors. There are talented people. I'm not saying they're a bunch of shills. But, you know, most of the movies that they do today are all CGI or heavily CGI. Uh, and so what you're really seeing is 
a lot of special effects to woo and wow you. Where when we went back to the, the 30s and 40s when they made movies and there were those long, you know, pause scenes where uh, the the the, uh, the main character the the, the I can think of Olivia de Havilland looking out for uh, Errol Flynn, you know, across the waters in one in in the Captain Blood movies and and uh, the old Errol Flynn pirate movies or or uh, his uh, Robin Hood movies. It was always that long distance gaze, which just expressed the longing. Today they throw in a couple of sex scenes and it does just as good, you know. <laughs> they were still playing to the cheap seats. Yeah, and, and and you know, here's so we've gone from that world where we knew what, who were actors and actresses, and and they they applied their trade. Now I'm not saying they didn't get involved in politics because let's face it, Ronald Reagan became a president, but um, we believe everything that we see. The general population I'm talking about believes everything that they see, even when they're told it's not real. So you're dealing with something that, that, that has just gone awry. It's like they're no longer conscious of who they are. And that's a big situation because it's our consciousness. And this is really kind of where I want to start to focus her head. We can expect Trump to do everything that he's going to do. And it's going to take a lot of force. And it's going to take FEMA camps. And it's going to take the military for him to round up everybody that he wants to round up and export repatriate back to their countries because they're illegally here. He wants to get rid of ISIS. That's going to set off the Islamic population both in uh, in Europe and in the United States. So these, and then that'll be dealt with. And so these minor things of the last days, we are going to see tra- come about. But the biggest thing nobody talks about, and that's the Nibiru event or Planet X. You see, we all talk about it on the Internet, but the government doesn't do anything. Uh, they just took down, I think it was NASA, just took down several of their sites that uh, watched space weather. They watched the weather from the sun. They're no longer accessible. So what's going on? So there's more and more evidence of this incoming situation of Naboo or Planet X. And so... Even those people that know about it, well, what are you going to do about it? How do we get past it? Oh, it's the end of the world. And, and I love the, I love the people that say the, the world is going to end in October 2017 or the end of 2017 because of an impact. Well, it is possible that we could have a meteor impact, but the world ain't going to end. It goes on. So there's a tremendous amount of disinformation out there, even that goes across the Internet, that we look at, and the world's going to end in October 2000. No, no. Remember December 21st, 2012, and then there was Comet Elenin, and then there was Comet Ison, and uh, the world was supposed to, you know, have situations with all of these, and and nothing happened. However, it's like the boy who cried wolf. So you've got a lot of this information that's going out on the Internet. And I'll say the same thing I said at Comet Ison, not Comet Ison, Comet Elenin, because it was E-L-E, Extermination Level Event. Uh, So, you know, they even took the the, uh, astronomer's last name and turned it into something cataclysmic. But uh, regardless, how do we get past this? And you see, this is all laid out within the scriptures. It all goes back to what was originally written and how to get through it. As a matter of fact, that's what the entire Bible is about. It's about how we were put on this planet, how we had alien interference, and we have for 6,000 years, whether it be through the Anunnaki gods or the Egyptian gods or the Assyrian or Babylonian or Greek or Roman gods, uh, we've been we've been controlled by these gods, and now everybody's saying, "Well, uh, oh, the Anunnaki are coming back with with Nibiru or Planet X." <laughs> Newsflash: This planet is filthy with aliens. 
and they're requiring live child sacrifice. If you haven't noticed, Pizzagate leads exactly to that. And 800 million, I'm sorry, 8 million children vanishing off the planet every year. Takes me back to that Twilight episode of uh, To Serve Man, a cookbook. So these things are going on. And when we look at the scripture, it clearly states, and I'm going to Revelation 19, that this system of evil in which we are subjects of and forced to live within is going to be destroyed. And it's tied into the Nibiru event or this Planet X event as the beginning of the judgment. Now, <clears throat> to understand who we really are, we have to go back and, and go right to Genesis, the first chapter, where it says, God said, let us make man in our image. And so in God's image, they were made both male and female. So we are made not in the image of the Anunnaki God wannabe aliens. And it's not the physical image in which we were designed. The physical image is a product of being an earthling. And we've got a lot of genetic prototypes that came before us. The image of God, considering God is pure dynamic conscious energy, is exactly that. Our pure dynamic conscious energy, which indeed is our soul, which keeps this body alive. So regardless of all the different things that uh, Trump wants to do, it has no effect on the soul of our body or the outcome of Planet X or Nibiru, however you want to call it. When we go back to the scriptures, those scriptures say that the leaders of this world, the kings, the queens, the military commanders, the mighty men, uh, they all seek shelter in the rock mountains and rock masses. This is out of Revelation 12, uh, Revelation 6, chapter 12, verses uh, 12 through 17. And, it, and this starts off with a major earthquake, all different things that could be caused by a Nibiru event. But regardless, the biggest thing that we have to be concerned about is when the lights go out. Because when the lights go out, everything changes. That's when we are really going to figure out who we are. At the soul level, at our soul conscious level, or what we would call subconscious, we are aware of things that we're not aware of at the conscious level. As a matter of fact, our brain operates basically in five, at five different speeds. Uh, gamma, which is the highest, and that is uh, above 25 hertz per second is high. It goes right off the charts there, essentially, but up into 60 would be gamma. Only dolphins think in gamma. If we're, if you've ever been in an accident and it seems like everything is in slow motion, your brain is thinking in gamma. Uh, we have beta, which is the operating system that we tend to be in the most during our conscious hours. Beta is where the reactionary state of flight or fight resides. It's also where fear lives. This whole world is designed to keep us in the beta state of mind. Always a reactionary state, regardless of what we see on TV, what we hear on the news, what's recorded in records, and what we're being bombarded with by uh, radio frequencies from cell towers and Wi-Fis and uh, other type uh, smart meters on your home, things of that nature. We're being bombarded with all this, and it's all an effort to keep us in the beta level. Well, Trump's the perfect president for that. Every day we're reacting to whatever he does. Yeah, it, 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 there you go. And look, all these protesters that were out doing their marching and doing their burning and cars overthrowing, whatever they were doing, whether it was a peaceful march or whether they were actually carrying out anarchy, they were in a state of beta. Now, what comes after beta is alpha. And we can go back to scripture, Genesis, the third chapter, to actually see the start of the beta test on Earth. The beta test was to give us the capability of fight or flight and also to create fear in each other. Uh, that, But we were talking about Alpha here. Alpha is, is great. 
we naturally love to be an alpha as humans alpha is where we relax if you're on vacation chances if you're not going to an amusement park you're going to be an alpha you know you sit on this uh, on the the seashore or next to the pool or whatever you do for your vacation relaxation time we spend that in alpha when we daydream or when we contemplate the future that's an alpha when we make love that's an alpha when we pray and meditate that's an alpha now here we go back it's the first step out of that conscious realm it's it's an alpha that we start to design our future when we slow down alpha runs from 12 to 8 hertz per second 8 hertz to 4 hertz is theta in theta we become very consciously aware or say subconsciously aware our brain is vibrating much slower most ca- most times that we're in theta it's we're either asleep or in very deep prayer or meditation uh in theta the outside three-dimensional world no longer exists and we can do some pretty fantastic things in data you can time travel and you can send your consciousness anywhere in theta forward or backward in time and across the universe or across the multiverse when we slow down even further to go into delta that's from zero to four cycles per second either you're in a coma you're in deep sleep or you are having an out-of-body experience or an extremely lucid dream when we are in delta these are all different states of consciousness in which we can voluntarily attain through practice and it is indeed our consciousness where our soul is it's not the brain the brain is just a little processing center but our soul retains our consciousness and our memory when I had my near-death experience and talk to anybody that's had a near-death experience or listen to what they have to say they are conscious they have a memory after their body has died which would indicate that guess what our intelligence our consciousness or our thinking capability isn't actually within our brain our memories are contained within our conscious energy think about that for a second so the what that would indicate is that the body is nothing more than a vessel like a glass into which we put milk a ship to which we put in people a car which we put people in uh just a vessel that's all the human body is it is the physical home to the children of the creator who have been put into that body at the soul or conscious level that happens pretty much uh, around conception and that that consciousness is nurtured throughout the first formative years of our lives and then we go on to expand our consciousness as we get get older but at that conscious energy is still connected right back to source it's the consciousness of humans which was is what was created in god's image the ability to create our own futures the ability to decide what we are going to do tomorrow we can plan tomorrow today animals don't do that they wake up in the morning and they say oh the sun's up or oh it's raining and then they take the appropriate action wild animals go forage for food whether it's raining or sunshine they're driven by the more by the laws of nature they're still all conscious souls but they don't have the consciousness of god they don't have the consciousness of yahweh or yahuwah or jehovah instilled into them and so they can never make the connection that they're children we can and when we read the scriptures it doesn't say that we evolved from the animals but that we were created a little lower than the angels think about that our evolutionary process didn't come from earth it came from the cosmos we are indeed the babies of the cosmos the babies of creation the children of God but we're still infants how difficult is it to deceive an infant not difficult at all is it 
As a matter of fact, we teach our children that Santa Claus is real, and then somewhere around four or five years old, we tell them that we lied for them for the past five years. He's not really real. But they believe us. They believe us. Something that I didn't... <laughs> my, my, when my kids were, were really... The boys were really little. They were out always playing with stuff, and the, the, my, my youngest one at that time found a lizard. Now, he was only about three or four, and... I said, the lizard didn't pee. You remember, the, the, there used to be the old joke about if a frog peed on you, you were going to get warts. Well, I kind of took it one step further, and I said, the lizard didn't pee on you, did he? He says, yeah. I said, uh-oh, now you're going to turn into a lizard. Well, I was playing, but he was seriously afraid that he was going to turn into a lizard. I didn't find this out until years later. <laughs> you know. And by, but later on, his mother said, you better tell him he's not going to turn into a lizard. He's really worried upstairs. He's washing his hands off. He's been scrubbing them for the last hour. So, you know, I didn't mean to, to, I'll tell you what, the kid's germ, well, he's 30 years old today, and uh, he's, I wouldn't call him a germaphobe, but uh, that certainly has left an impact, and he ain't no slob. <laughs> very neat and very clean in appearance. <laughs> <laughs> created a little neuroses there for your boy. Yeah, un unexpectedly, you know, unexpectedly. But we do that to our children without even knowing it. You know, that that's the weird thing. So when the government carries out their uh, mind control plans or how they manipulate us through RF frequencies and vibrations or through the chemicals that we suck up or the vaccines that we're that people have taken mistakenly or, or uh, the, the GMO foods that we're bringing in, they know all this stuff. They, they're much further advanced in the sciences, and they know and understand how it affects us. Uh, I believe it was 2002 or 2001 or the other. There was a patent issued for con controlling human physiology using monitors, like TV monitors, com computer monitors, the monitor in your smartphone. They figured out how to control our physiology using the monitors by sending signals through our very computers. As I understand now, with the latest software, our computers watch us. Our TVs watch us. All they have to do is flick on the, 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 the software within the machine itself, and they can watch us right within our own homes, and we would don't, wouldn't even know it. So that's where we've, we've, it's gotten beyond George Orwell's 19, uh, yeah, 1984, the control has gotten so far out of line and people just don't realize it. But once we gain that conscious level and start making that conscious choice, you see, it's that consciousness which, which drives us. And I, I'm going to give you everybody a, a good example. Russell, how many times have you said in your life, I knew that was going to happen? 240, I'd say. <laughs> if not more. Now, here's the point. If we knew what was going to happen, why didn't we do something to change the outcome so it wouldn't happen? Why didn't we ta at least take ourselves out of the equation so it wouldn't happen to us? You see, almost I've, in my whole entire life, I've only met one person that says, no, I've never said that. I was like, really? <laughs> okay. Well, there goes my point. But that's been the only person. Uh, everybody else said, yeah, I've got that. I have that happen all the time. That is our subconscious, what we call subconscious, but that is essentially our conscious mind in theta or maybe even delta that's seeking out information in the future. Because we knew it was going to happen before it happened, whether it was an event of some sort or a situation that came up or you know, an accident or whatever the case might be, you know, relationship gone bad, somehow we had that inside information. It's being able to take that inside information and be consistent with it to understand how it works. I studied a lot of, after being educated in the scriptures for 15 years, I was fortunate enough to come across a class which was great, a class on metaphysics, and at the time it was called Silva Mind Control. My family and friends thought I was going to join a cult. It's it, The name has been changed. Um, 
the update, it's actually the Silver Ultra Mind Method. And what it was was actually a class on how to use your your mind, how to use your consciousness. And it was based on uh, the Edgar Casey method, but it was also combined with science, so we could break down and understand each phase and what we could do in each phase of the consciousness levels that we are able to attain and how to attain those levels. It's just like working out. If you go and you work, you go to a gym and you work out lifting weights, you can't lift 200 pounds. Well, maybe you can, but most people can't go into a gym, put 200 weight, pounds of weight on a bar and go and lift it. You know, you might start off with 75 and then go up to 100 and 125 and then 150 and 170 and, and then you hit your 200. But it takes that effort and it takes constant exercise in order to build up the muscle mass that we need in order to lift that weight. It's the same thing at the conscious level. That's why prayer and meditation are important. But not just um meditation, because it's like, for the older folks, they can appreciate this. Remember when you pick up an, a, a standard home phone, you know, one that was already connected to the phone company, you pick it up and you put it to your ear and you'd hear the dial tone? And it was wait, let you know you had an open line and how you can dial in the numbers. Well, meditating without purpose is just listening to the dial tone. We should use meditation to create our futures and to become more aware of our surroundings, especially going into this dynamic change. Here's the thing. When we have this Nibiru event, the biggest thing is that the lights are going to go out. More than likely, we'll have an EMP, and we can get an EMP from the sun, just from a solar flare. We can get an EMP from uh, one of our friendly folks like uh, North Korea that's developing nuclear missiles. They could launch one up into the, uh, into the upper ad, uh, atmosphere, set it off, and shut off our lights forever. Well, until we repair them. You know, I had an EMP expert on last night. Did you? Yeah, Matthew what, Stein, MIT. Oh, Matt. Great, great person. I know Matthew very well. Yeah, he uh, was, we did almost two hours last night. Yeah, well, then your audience knows uh, Matthew Stein graduated uh, with an engineering degree from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, writes the book, When Technology Fails. Yes, sir. You got it. You know it. <laughs> yes. And what did Matthew say? Exactly what I'm saying is that when the lights go out, we're going to be in trouble. And did, did he bring up the nuclear plants? Absolutely. So there you go. We have over 400 nuclear plants around the world that will go into to Fukushima or, or Chernobyl meltdown. And this is where it ties into uh, the scripture. And in, in, interestingly enough, Matthew, the 24th chapter, I believe it's the 22nd verse, where it said that those days would get so bad that no flesh would be saved. But on account of the chosen ones, those days would be cut short. So who are the chosen ones? What are they, some divine religion? Are they some divine group, somebody who's got a lot of money? Are they, are they the Rothschilds? Are they the Bushes? Are they the Trumps? No. They are the ones who choose to be children of God, who will go back and say, yep, I know these things happen. I I say I I say why didn't I do something? Well, let me go back. I digress here for a moment. I knew it was going to happen. We're the ones who say that all the time, who have been saying that all the time. We're the ones who are looking for change. We are the ones who are awake and know that something is going on here. How do we get through it? It's exercising that consciousness at the soul level, and it has nothing to do with religion. It's connecting back to our spiritual family, if you want to call it that. It's connecting back to the power of the cosmos itself, the conscious power of the cosmos itself. When I say cosmos, I mean all of it, all the, the three dimensions that we live in and the seven dimensions in which we also live in, all ten dimensions. And here's the wild part. The three dimensions in which we live, dimensions 8, 9, and 10, yeah, they're not 1, 2, and 3. They're the last dimensions. So you have from the singularity that of one dimension, where there was nothing but pure dynamic energy, 
all the way up to the seventh dimension, interestingly enough, a very biblical number, God's numbers, spiritually complete seven. And then you get the number for the, the, the uh, spiritually complete, or the, actually it's a physically complete number for man, but it, there's a spiritual component in there, and that number is ten, which is human or earthly completeness. <laughs> How about that? We live in the tenth dimension. No wonder. It all matches up. And so when we d can discover and understand who we actually are and where our origins actually come from, we're better than the aliens that we think that we believe exist. We're better than the interdimensionals that are around because we can directly declare ourselves children of God. You see, here's the thing about aliens and the interdimensionals that are visiting Earth now, at least for the most part. They're all part of the satanic rebellion. That same rebellion that requires live child sacrifice and is putting such mean, cruel people in charge of running this planet. People who want to take everything from us and then watch us be destroyed in this Nabru or Planet X event. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. At least not for those who can make that connection and draw power on that dynamic energy, the energy of God itself, or what we refer to as God. Yep, we're going to see UFOs. We already do. We're going to see aliens. We already have. I, I've had my own experience back shortly after my 18th birthday. My, my whole life has been almost like an in, being on the front lines of an interdimensional war. These things exist, and they want to see us destroyed. It's just that simple. Uh, they see us destroyed, and they win. That's pretty much how they see it. And so we are the, the general population of the planet is kept in extreme ignorance and in extreme poverty so that we can't educate ourselves to the point of understanding any of this. Thank God for the Internet. Because people who have honest hearts and want to learn more have a true source that they could go look to. Here's the thing. With an Aburu event, there is going to be a, a, an extreme lack of food. If you live on a coastal area, chances are very good that you're going to get washed away, or at least your, all your possessions will. Uh, if you live inland, this is considering that we adopt just-in-time warehousing, which is essentially what is called a just-in-time production, there's only enough food for three days within the food chain. So if you don't have food stored for your family and yourself, prepare to go hungry. Now think of all these masses of people. Think of Washington, D.C., New York City, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Chicago. Let's turn off the lights. Let's turn off the electric. Let's not ship them any food for about six months. And see what happens. How long would it take? And lock it up so they can't escape. How long would it take for those populations to turn on themselves, turn on each other, and be killing each other for the last scrap of food left that they could find? Think about it. There's a lot of reasons why we're told to get out of the cities. And there's strong indication that now is the time. We are seeing these things happen. Uh, several different prophecies indicate when we see these things happen, it's time to flee to the mountains. One of the reasons that I got off grid. Now, I'm back on grid here, and I'm going to tell you something. I can't wait to get back off grid. Why? Because I can literally feel the effects of the radio frequency bombardment that we're getting hit with. My sleep patterns are all messed up. Uh, I'm tired all the time, physically tired all the time, uh, and without reason why. You know, when I was living off the grid, I worked all day, very physically intensive labor, did it day after day, We'd come home, came back to what we called camp, the, the travel trailer that we were living in, made dinner, relaxed for a few hours, went to sleep, and got up the next morning and did it all over again, day after day after day for five straight months. I had more energy than I knew what to do with. I got back here and it feels like somebody beat me up. And I've been, you know, it's like, 
What happened? What is it? Up off the grid, there was no electricity. The closest cell tower was about 30 miles away. There was no Wi-Fi to deal with, no bombardments, very few chemtrails. We barely saw any chemtrails all, all year long. It was refreshing. It, to, the, the silence was golden. So when these jets would pass by like 30,000, 35,000 feet, you'd literally, you could hear them passing by. No chemtrails because they weren't leaving any kind of an exhaust behind them, just the way jets should. You know, half the jets you see today are pouring out chemtrails. Why? You live in a populated area. So all of these things are designed, and also the food. We had, we're eating a lot healthier food, believe it or not. The, the produce in the stores in the rural area that we were in was much more tasty and looked better than what we get here in the New York metropolitan area. I'm in Pennsylvania, but which it's like 50, 50 miles straight east is New York City. So we're not that far away. People that live here work in the city. They get up 4 o'clock in the morning and come home at 9 o'clock at night. Great life, huh? So we are in a position where we are getting this information now, where we can put together the pieces and where we can understand what's necessary. And in order to get through this paradigm change, we have to be able to put ourselves in a state of alpha where fear doesn't exist and we're not going to be at war with others. It would behoove us to be in safe areas because once we... Once this happens, we have to rely on each other. We have to be able to work together. And if we're going to fight for the last scrap of food, ain't nobody going to make it. Those people will be stuck in the beta state of mind and they'll never get past this. Now, why should we get past this? Why do we want to get past this? We have a fantastic opportunity that no other generation has had. We have the opportunity to watch the end of this satanic system be destroyed, but not only be destroyed, be replaced by what people have called, called the return of Christ. Jesus isn't coming back as the king of king. I'm sorry, as, as the prince of peace. He got a promotion. He's coming back as the king of kings and lord of lords to establish a thousand-year reign of peace. Well, how does that affect me? I'm 60 years old already. I'm only going to live another 20 years if I'm lucky. No, you live, you live past this paradigm change, and we are in for a fantastic future. We actually get our DNA repaired. Here's something. Here's a fact. Earth was, we, we were given a prime directive. Remember the Star Trek days, the prime directive, never interfere with those civilizations on those class M planets, you know, you had to only observe what was going on. You couldn't help them in any way because it would change their future. Well, that's exactly what happened here on Earth. Somebody interfered with the prime directive. The prime directive given to the perfect, genetically perfect couple that were seated on Earth was to be fruitful, become many, have in subjection the, the fish of the sea, the animals on the land, and the birds in the air, and to have all green vegetation that produce seed as food for us to eat, or all vegetation that produce food, uh, that produce seed, was good for us to eat. That prime directive was never carried out. Yeah, the earth's full of people, people that die all the time. There's no perfect human DNA on this planet, and the planet itself is being destroyed. Just the one Fukushima alone has basically wiped out the Pacific Ocean. And now it's creeping up over the top of the Earth, as it appears to, and coming down uh, through the Northwest Passage and affecting sea life uh, along the coast of Newfoundland or Labrador, one or the other, I forget which one it is, but they're having ocean die-offs right down to the starfish and lobster. Herring are dying. You know, this is the, the, the bottom of the food chain that's getting wiped out. And if the bottom goes, the top is sure to follow. So what's going on? How can we have such a great future? Once this ends, and this is recorded in, in Revelation, the 19th chapter, when the King of Kings shows up, he doesn't show up by himself. It says that he comes with the armies of the heavens, armies, plural, and he's coming to put an end to this. So this satanic system ends 
it changes, we get a system that is going to work with us and help us. An extra, what we can consider an extraterrestrial system, but it is, is indeed a system run by who we commonly call Jesus, who, have, who has, already has the title of King, and, of King of Kings and Lord of Lords. There's, there'll be a lot of help. Just stopping the, the, the agony that's going on, just stopping the destruction of this planet and letting the planet heal itself would be beneficial, let alone having advanced intelligent life forms working with us to rehabilitate the planet. I said that those days would be cut short. If those four, over 400 nuclear plants go into Fukushima and meltdown, we're going to need somebody else's technology to fix them because we don't have that technology. Otherwise, we would have fixed Fukushima already. We're going to need somebody else's technology. And it's not the aliens that are here because if they had the technology and we're going to share it with us, maybe we would have already done something about it. Like I said, they want to see us fail. That's why it's the satanic system of evil. We want to see the kingdom of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, that who we know of Jesus. It ain't, or it's, yes, yeah, sorry, bad English. It is not a religious thing. No one has ever heard me endorse any sort of religion ever. Ever. The only thing that I've endorsed is a personal relationship with a higher power. And then the understanding of how we can control our consciousness, how we can exercise it through prayer and meditation to keep us out of that beta fight and flight response and keep us in a state of love where we can create our futures. Now, one of the great things that's happening, it's actually happening right now, as I understand, is we're going through the photon belt. This is a trip that's going to take 2,000 years to, to finish before we come out the other side. And by the, the research that scientists have done with photons is that, guess what? Photons help repair DNA. Amazing. We're going to have to need to get a little extra special help there. But uh, our DNA will be repaired. Once our DNA is repaired, those of us who are old will start to regenerate and look younger. Ask, do this for yourself. Ask. Any older family members that you have, you know, grandmother, grandfather, mom, dad, if they're still around, how old they feel inside. Not how old they feel body-wise, because as you get older, you're going to get more aches and pains. But what do they feel consciously? I asked my mother this a few years back. She was in her early 70s, and she said, I feel like I'm about 28 or 29. I noticed that with myself. I feel like I'm in my around 30, 31, early 30s. Women seem to like it uh, younger than 30 for some reason. You ask a woman and she's going to tell you younger than 30. Most men will tell you right around 30, 31, 32. And at least that's what I've found when I've asked that question. Regardless of what their physical age is, the age of their consciousness, what they feel in their own thought patterns and in their own soul is that they feel around 30. And indeed, that's what we'll be brought back to because we'll have that perfect human DNA which will regenerate. Well, now here's the question. If we don't die, what's going to happen to Earth? It'll be so overpopulated and we'll all... No. All the stars are named for a reason. When we go back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning, God created the Earth. It says the heavens and the Earth. But the earth, the earth is the beginning for the human children of God. The way that we have to repackage this to become successful is to, is to keep in mind that we are spiritual creatures that are given physical bodies that we can occupy in order to enjoy a physical playground, in order to enjoy the taste of a fresh piece of fruit, in order to enjoy the smell of a, of a fine perfume or maybe uh, the clean breeze of, of mountain air, to enjoy the sight of a sunset, to listen to the waves crashing or to a stream or brook babbling, to hear a child's laughter, to hear the words of a loved one saying, I love you. We were put into this physical body to enjoy these physical experiences. 
that have all been robbed from us in one way or another. So to regain these, to rehab this back, and to rehabilitate the earth and to make it a perfect sphere is indeed the next step in our evolution, if you want to call it that. But really, it's along spiritual lines. We are evolving spiritually. We have become awake from the rest of the people in this world. We call them sheeple. We know that we are connected to something more than what we are. We know that this planet is going to change. We know that it is being ruled by some sort of evil empire that wants to cut us off at the legs at every chance it can get. We know that we need to be prepared for change. What we know very little of is what the future contains and what it holds, and the future is really beautiful. We get to be restored back to prime directive standards. We get to welcome back those souls who were uh, once here before. They get the opportunity to reincarnate and repopulate this planet. They paid sin's wage of death. They're not burning in hell or up in heaven. With, well, they're kind of in, in the memory of Yahweh, so they're technically, yes, in heaven, but they're certainly not burning in hell. Uh, their memory is preserved for them, and all you have to do is, to, what God needs has to do is take that memory that is con contained within their soul, because as it says in, in Genesis, the ninth chapter and fifth, fifth verse, God says, I shall ask back the soul from every living creature. Yes, from man, I shall ask back his soul upon death. This had to do with the draining of the blood and our blood being within the soul of the body, whether it's animal or man. And so our soul goes back right back to the creator. When we are in, incarnated, when, the, when those who have passed away get a chance to reincarnate here on earth in the flesh, they will be given the same genetic bodies that they had, not the same body per se, but the same DNA encoded body. So they will have a physical body for their soul, which will have all of their memories to be in. So their body will be the vessel for that person. And they will have that chance to be back with us. So we will actually, according to scripture, we will be reunited with our family. You know, with our grandparents and great-grandparents and great-great-grandparents all the way back through history. When this process is completed, we get to take our next step. That step comes first in Revelation, the 21st chapter, where it says, I love 1 through 4, but in verse 4 specifically, it says that uh, sorrow and pain and outcry will be gone and death will be no more. The former things have passed away. Why? Because the tent of God is with mankind. It doesn't say that we're going to leave anywhere or go anywhere. It says the tent of God comes here, resides with mankind. And it is at that point that we are given our perfect, we will have total perfect DNA, and we will also have a total perfect human spirit or uh, soul to go with that and we will have that blessing from the creator and we will actually be given our powers back when jesus was on the face of the earth he did a lot of miracles raised the dead fed thousands with few with leftovers essentially cured the ill uh let the blind see the lame walk he controlled the weather he turned water into wine and he said, you will do greater things than I have done. When it comes time to leave this planet, we won't leave and go to heaven. We will leave and go to other planets. Here's a little tidbit, and women are going to hate me for this. Every healthy woman that's born on this planet is born with approximately 400 eggs in her ovaries. It's something I'm writing letters to Earth because you've got to do the math. It's great. I'm sorry, 400,000 eggs in her ovaries. a little late this evening. Uh, just to pass one per month would take over 35,000 years to do. If we had perfect human DNA, that wouldn't be a problem, nor would childbirth be painful. But now, what if we were designed to 
you know, where women cycled once a year as opposed to once a month. In order to use all those eggs up, it would be how long? Almost a half million years. So you see, Earth time does not no longer becomes a factor. When we have perfect human DNA to keep the physical body in operation, we have a chance to become mature souls, so to speak. You hear the expression old soul. Well, some people just have more mature souls than others because they're more cognizant and aware. But as we go along throughout time, we will be restored back to this state. So when, guess what? When it comes time to get off Earth, very simple. You go down to Delta. You envision where you want to be, where, where you're going to go. Uh, and just kind of like in a dream now, instead of uh, being in a dream and waking up back here on Earth, uh, you focus to where you want to go, whether it's around the block or across the universe, because time and distance doesn't matter with thought. And we can instantly put ourselves, create our own wormhole and put ourselves on another planet to inhabitate. Or to inhabit, I should say, and <laughs> combine two words here, <laughs> inhabit. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that is our future. That's the next step after Earth. All the stars are named, and it's, they're named for a reason. Something that, I, that was told me September of 1975, I was 19 years old, it was the last time that I would see any of my mentors. And I just watched a fantastic slideshow on, uh, it was a special presentation that was given, and, and I watched a fantastic slideshow on the universe, the then known universe, nothing compared to what we know as Hubble. And I was talking to the person, uh, this mentor of mine that, that gave the presentation, and told him how much I enjoyed it and so forth, and he looked at me, he's an older man, he's in his mid-80s mid at the time. And he looked me straight in the eyes and he said, your future is in the stars. I didn't know exactly what he meant at the time. It was shown me and uh, I was shown in letters to Earth. And that is, yes, we uh, NASA knows now because we've been looking for them, that there are more and more Earth like planets throughout the throughout the Milky Way and throughout the universe. It's believed that there are over a billion stars in in the Milky Way itself, and that 20% of those stars have planets that might be inhabitable, Earth-like planets. And there's billions and billions and billions, I should say hundreds of billions of galaxies spread across the universe. Now, here's an interesting thing, and I, I kind of figured this out several years ago, and I, there's a little YouTube video of it. Who or what is God? And, you know, it's a, life, a lifelong question. We need to reduce things to its most simplest form. You usually get the correct answer. In Revelation, God says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. Before me, there was nothing, and after me, there will be nothing. Now, we know one of the first laws of physics is that you can neither create nor destroy energy. So now, if both statements are correct, the only thing that God could possibly be is pure dynamic energy, energy at its most pure form or state. And we know this that this energy is conscious because we are conscious. But the question is, what turned this pure conscious energy into everything that we know and live today? See, the energy had to come up with a concept of some sort, and it's a fantastic con concept. It's the concept of love. The more you give, the better you feel. The more you get, the better you feel. And it works on so many different levels. You could love your car. You could love your dog. You could love your kids. You can love your family. You can love that, that special someone like no one else can. And so now, what if you had 10 kids? Well, do you only have enough love to go around for one or two? No. And do those kids, do those 10 kids love you? Yeah. They all love you. They're your kids. They love you unconditionally. What if you had a hundred kids? What if you had a thousand kids? What if you had a billion kids? Think of all that love. You see, that's the physical family that we are essentially commissioned to produce, not just to fill the earth, 
but to fill all Earth-like planets across the universe. And having perfect human DNA, we won't die. Think about it. We have a fantastic future ahead. One of unimaginable pleasures and fantastic abilities that will be given. But we have to get through the paradigm change of this judgment period of Planet X and Armageddon to get to the other side. And it's nothing mystical. It's nothing fantastical. You don't have to carry out special rites or say special words. All it takes is a conscious change from the beta state of mind to the alpha state of mind, one that is based in love, and have that personal connection back to our Creator and Father. At the soul level, when we make that connection, it's just like a child calling to us. Daddy, you know, it, it, it's funny. Uh, my uh, my uh, grandson, one of my grandsons, he's just turned one. Doesn't quite talk yet, but he does, but you kind of have to understand him pretty well. You know, I have to know what he means. But almost every time that I that I go in and see him, we live right. I live right next door to them, so I see him almost every day. But when I see him, the first thing he does is he puts his arms up. He wants to be picked up. Do I ignore this child? No. Every time he puts his arms up, I pick him up. He's got me trained. <laughs> and it's doing the same thing with the creator of the multiverse. It's training ourselves to call out in prayer, using our conscious energy, and declaring ourselves his children to pray and ask for guidance and direction. I, I have faced things in my life that all I did was pray and sleep for days on end. Literally, that's all I did. I didn't even eat. I prayed and I slept because I was facing things that I had to conquer. I had to overcome. My future seemed pretty uncertain at, the, at, the, at that juncture. But I did. I overcame them. And it was through prayer and meditation uh, uh, that I was able to do that. And so here I am with you today. And it's happened several times in my life. So we can overcome what seems to be impossible by exercising that spiritual ability that we have that kicks in that conscious energy at the soul level. And indeed, we can create our futures and have a dynamic, fantastic future. Yeah, you see, people don't like that because it involves work. Ah, yes, it does involve work. It, 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 and people like the magic words. They like the charms. They like these passive things. They like the cross they can put on the wall. Yeah. Oh, I'm saved. You know, I love that one saved, always saved. Yeah, okay, that's why Jesus said those who endure till the end will be saved. Nobody gets an easy pass out of here. Nobody gets their ticket punched for ascension or rapture. Both of those are created falsehoods. As a matter of fact, there's no biblical basis for the rapture. That dogma was invented by an American minister back in the 1830s. There are a select group. When it talks about the select, that, that group is numbered within Revelation 7 itself. It's, it's uh, 144,000 that are chosen out of the world. It's a fantastic uh, reason why they do this, why this is done. The 144,000, it's essentially 12,000 times 12,000. It's based on the number 12, and that is an organizationally perfect number for some reason. I don't quite understand it, but that's what the, that's what they say. Uh, you got the 12 apostles with Jesus as the head. So that seems to repeat down through the, uh, the biblical theme. Those, that number of humans that are taken, and that's actually who my mentors were. They made up this class of, of which were the remnant of this class of 144,000, also known as the bride class, also known as the little flock. Uh, the brothers of Jesus, the true brothers of Jesus, said, you will know that you are my, my brothers by, the, by uh, your works, by the love you have among each other. So those are the, and they've been here since the first century, not that 
they've been here consistent. I mean, not that they're a thousand, two thousand years old. The knowledge was passed down from generation to generation, but kept very, very close to. It was thought like almost a closed society until uh, the Reformation five hundred years ago, and that's when they first seem to spring back up on the scene. Then they come back on the scene shortly before the turn of the twentieth century. There was a fantastic evangelical movement in the United States during the 1800s. And that's it. Where did that come from? Nobody seems to know. But all of a sudden, there was this evangelical movement that sprung up out of nowhere. Oddly enough, the Rothschilds financed a lot of them. And a lot of the evangelical movements, uh, their leaders were Freemasons. So even though there's this resurgence, there's always the uh, proverbial... Uh, leavening in the dough, which causes fermentation and causes it to rise. But you see, when we bring it back to, to pure dynamic love, there's no leavening in love. There's no ulterior motive in, per, in, in pure love. Our children don't love us because we give them gifts. We spank them too, and they still love us. Or we discipline them, whether it's via spanking or time out in the corner or, you know, have, having to sit still somewhere or sent to bed early. You know, whatever that, that form of discipline is. With me, it was spanking, but that's besides the point. I found that that other means of discipline worked better for different children. But um, we do that because we love them and we want them to be successful adults, successful people. Doesn't our spiritual father want us to be successful as well? Then we start have to start looking at this logic and start developing this love. Uh, and like I said, it's it's not like we have to be a part of some religion. It's a personal thing. You know, your kids don't have to join any religion in order to be your kids. They're your children because they're your personal children. They have a genetic connection. We have a spiritual connection. There's not much of a difference there. It, 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 it's funny. I think my my ex uh, grandfather in law and my ex uncle, uh, my I should say my ex wife's uncle and her grandfather. It looked like somebody took a cookie cutter and just you know like 20 years later made another copy. <laughs> Even the way they talk, the way they walk, everything about them, their attitudes. It was like, wait a minute, what is this? A clone? 20 years after the fact or something? Uh, you know, and you see, we see that with families, you know, where just, you know, sometimes mother and daughter, father and son, they're just so much alike, even right down to the mannerisms. We got a caller a night, Peter. Absolutely. So it's been an absolute pleasure. I, I hope that I've been able to bring some enlightenment into the folks. We do have a fantastic future ahead. We've got some very difficult things to, to get through. Uh, if, as I said, if you haven't read Letters to Earth, and I do quote this, I quote the protocol in Letters to Earth. That's one of the things that could, probably the biggest thing that got me in trouble when writing Letters to Earth. Um, yeah, it, it's Letters to Earth has cost me quite a bit of inconvenience, shall we say. But it's a fantastic book. And, uh, it's everything that we talked about tonight is pretty much in there. Where, where we are going and what, where we are, what our future is. Uh, Without having a goal, what do we know what to shoot for? If there's no target, what do we aim for? All we know is that Planet X is coming. The vast majority of people don't know how to live, how to get through it, and what they need to do. No, the vast majority of people are totally clueless. The people that are aware of it coming are probably frightened, shaken in their boots because they don't have a clue on how they're going to survive it. Can we talk more about Planet X next time? Absolutely. Absolutely, because there's a lot of scriptures that there's actually six scriptures that don't talk about this Planet X or Nibiru event, plus the Exodus, which is a passion play for what's going on right now. So something to look forward to in the next uh, in the next episode. Uh, there you go. Six prophecies that point to Nibiru. I like yeah. it. Next time with Peter Kling. Love and blessings to all. Russell, thank you very much for having me, folks. Thank you very much for listening. Go visit my website, www.peterkling.com. Read Letters to Earth. The future is yours. Barnes & Noble and Amazon.com. You can find them there both. Thank you. Letters to Earth. The future is yours. Buy it now. Peter, thank you so much. Always a pleasure, Russell. Always a pleasure.